Hey, it's me, Dr. Not a Dr. Juno. Welcome back to lecture number four of useful shit to know. So guys, now it's like, we're at a point where it's like, okay, maybe religion, maybe I do need to figure out some religion, some way to organize my beliefs. And you have a lot of options on ways to do that. The first way you could do, we're gonna stick with like the sciencey ones first. We're gonna go with moral relativism. And what the moral relativists say is pretty much the one true thing is pain. You know, you can't argue putting your hand on a hot stove, does that hurt? There's no argument, it hurts. Pain is real. So from there, then the next move they make is they define bad. There are some C's in unnecessary. I don't know. Unnecessary pain and suffering. So this is how they define bad or define evil. And then their next move goes something like this. If there is evil, then there must be the opposite of evil. Because if something exists, then not something also exists. If you take discrete math or any like logic reasoning classes, you go into like the mathematical arguments for all this. It's kind of cool. Philosophy talks about it with like words and stuff. That's kind of cool too. Anyway, so the opposite would be good and this. So they don't really have a definition for good. So what they do is they negate the worst thing and call that good. So we want not bad, which is the alleviation. And good can be summed up by love. So what a moral relativist thinks, there's no God. The only thing that's real in the world is pain. Therefore, bad or evil is unnecessary pain and suffering. And thus the opposite of evil is good. And good is love. Good is the alleviation of pain and suffering. And that is how a moral relativist goes about his or her day. If you're interested in moral relativism, there's a really smart guy named Sam Harris. I'll write his name. And also Yuval Harari. Both of these guys make extremely coherent, complete arguments for why God does not exist. But they also give a good way to orient yourself morally. So if you're one of those people who wants to be, no, I don't believe in God, you should check out these two guys because their beliefs align with yours, but they're smarter than you. And you might wanna, you might wanna see what they're saying because they're smarter than you and they've thought about these things much, much deeper than you have. So literally, if you just listen to them, like they put videos and talks on YouTube on the internet, you could read their books. That would probably be a really, really good way to understand what they're thinking, but you don't even have to do that because videos exist, so you could just watch some of their videos. How easy. Like, it is not, it does not take a lot of difficulty for you to go become educated on Sam Harris or Yuval Harari. Like, you're just laying on your bed not doing anything. Why not? Why not? Anyway. Now, if you're not a moral relativist, we're gonna take a Buddhist perspective. Where does the H go in Buddhist? Now, I'm throwing Buddhism in here because we want to like include Eastern philosophy too, not just all Western philosophy. And honestly, there's a lot of cool things in Buddhism. All right, so Buddhism is about enlightenment, or it's about like becoming one with the, we're gonna call it a higher essence, or like uh, Jung talks about it as the collective unconscious, as the, the birthplace of dreams, the birthplace of thought. In Christianity, they call it God, but we'll, we're just gonna call it a higher essence. And in Buddhism, it's the path to enlightenment path to enlightenment and it's this eightfold path and pretty much you go down the path and you have an acceptance of suffering and pretty much you accept it you tolerate it you deal with it and that's how you become enlightened i want to throw in here too after buddhism there's this idea called stoic stoic stoicism stoicism okay so stoicism this is like an ancient greek philosophy um the meditations of marcus of Okay, this book, The Meditations of Marcus Aurelius, really, really good book to get an idea of what stoicism is. There's also a lot of YouTube videos about being stoic. It's pretty similar to the whole Buddhism thing. So they say that the highest good in their value hierarchy, this guy up at the top, this is wisdom, this is knowledge, and they say that the wise, the divine reason. And this is kind of like, it's kind of like Buddhism, kind of the same thing, you like accept the suffering and part of it all. Now, you might notice Pepperdine is not stoically affiliated or Buddhistly affiliated. It's Christian affiliated. And you might ask yourself, huh, why Christianity? Why is it that this is the religion that's kind of stuck around and become prominent in America? And well, that's a really tough question 
but we can break it down a little bit. First, Christianity is kind of, it's a complex term. We're gonna think about it as the Judeo-Christian ethic. And we're gonna think about it in this way because we're taking more of like an objective, science-y kind of view on this, okay? We're trying to think through it rationally, scientifically, okay? So we're gonna think about it as a Judeo-Christian ethic. Judaism and Christianity, for the most part, are one and the same when it comes to morals and values. And that's the part of the religion that we're focusing on here. The stuff that matters, the useful to know. So at the heart of the Judeo-Christian ethic, there's this idea that there's the divine individual. In the Bible, it says that every human has a divine spark. That within every individual, there's something divinely unique to just them. They are unique in the image of God. This is also really a foundational idea to free speech too, because the idea of free speech is that everyone has something unique and different to bring to the conversation, to bring to the table. And we have that idea because of the Judeo-Christian ethic, which gives sovereignty to the individual because every human has within them a divine spark and is made in the image of God. Christianity is also a really easy religion to kind of act out because it's personified really well in the character Jesus. And like the cool thing is not a whole lot of people understand like what Christianity actually is, but you know, everybody, everybody loves them some Jesus. Everyone has like an idea of Jesus. Jesus is like the, He's the ultimate ideal. He's the ultimate role model, you know, the perfect human. And Jesus is a really cool character too, because he preaches love, he preaches forgiveness, and he preaches compassion. But he also preaches responsibility. He preaches to bear your burden, to pick up your cross. If you read the book of James, the book of James gives a really good detailed look at the more, the tough stuff about Jesus. Jesus is, also, is often portrayed in only a positive light. Sometimes people think Christianity is just, oh, it's all forgiveness and happiness and everyone is good and everyone, oh, everyone is made in God's image, that means everyone's good. I don't, no, no, that's not at all what it means. That's, a, that's an ignorant person, that's a naive person. They're blind to the evil, the dark side within all of us. The Bible talks about this dark side in Genesis, in the story of Cain and Abel. If you don't know the story, Abel, he's a good guy, everyone likes him, he does his job well, he makes his sacrifice to God, God likes his sacrifice. Cain, he's the older brother. Um, Cain works hard too, makes a sacrifice to God. God doesn't accept his sacrifice. And then Cain gets angry and resentful at God. And to spite God, he does the worst possible thing he can imagine, and that is kill his brother Abel. So Cain and Abel kind of represent the two ends of the spectrum of where an individual can lead. That's another cool idea in Christianity is the God of Christianity gives free will, a free choice. He lets you choose your own path so you can be either Cain or Abel. You do control your own future. And that's a pretty, pretty cool idea. There are in fact a lot of really cool ideas, a lot of cool things with the Judeo-Christian ethic. And we're gonna talk about its track record a little bit too try to get an idea on why Pepperdine is Christianly affiliated and not Buddhists, Buddhismly affiliated or stoically affiliated or scientismly affiliated. And so pretty much this guy, it's been, it's been doing the best in developing big societies. This is the ethic that the West was built upon, was founded upon. Our founding fathers, the big like new thing about America has always been freedom. And so it's always been the power of the individual. A test of a religious system is how well the people flourish under it. And up to this point in history, kind of like how capitalism is the best society structure so far we've found, the Judeo-Christian ethic has been proven across time to be the best religion system we've found. And we're making that claim, we're making that claim for a couple reasons. One, we're making that claim based on its results. And we're also making this claim based on how it stood the test of time. I think it was, I think it was C.S. Lewis who was in conversation with someone and he was like joking around. He's like, yeah, all religions are fairy tales. Christianity is just the one fairy tale that came true. And this is another way to look at the argument. So if we look at the fields of history and archeology, span we think Jesus actually existed and like think that Jesus was real and he was actually like the son of God which is like nuts if you really think about it. Cause that means like God really does exist. And like we might have found evidence of this Jesus character who might have actually been the son of God because that's what all the evidence points to, which would be nuts. And like, maybe that's the case. 
it would be it would be kind of cool, kind of crazy if that was the case because like like Christianity is a really good religion. Like Buddhism is a good religion. Stoicism is a good religion. I mean, there's many good religions. Christianity is definitely one of them. You know, there's like second class religions like Mormonism or Islam. And they're like, uh, uh, maybe not. But like like Christianity is a first class religion. You know. And maybe it's, it might be true. It's like, if there's one that was actually true, it would be Christianity, which is crazy. Yeah, maybe, maybe God isn't dead. Maybe he does actually exist. I don't know. That would be kind of shitty if God did exist and our university system is still trying to kill him with these stupid theories of moral relativism and social construction. You are not a socially constructed being. You have deep, deep biological circuits inside of you. Guys, that's gonna do it. This has been useful to know here at Pepperdine. Yeah, I gotta go take an e-contest. I'll catch you guys later.